Welcome to Hashtag Toe to Toe. And this week, we are coming to you from the famous Gleason's Gym in Brooklyn, New York. And we've got a special guest who just happens to have a big, big fight this Saturday, Dominic Brazil. Dominic, how you been, man? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, you look nice and sharp, but very relaxed. Yeah, man, I'm confident, man. Uh, I got a big smile on my face. I'm glad it's fight week. I, I can't get, wait to get it started Saturday night. Yeah, good stuff, man. Well, let's look and see what the fans have tweeted in. Yeah, definitely. So Murphy asks, why did this fight get so personal? You know, we, uh, we had a little bit of a push and shove match. Uh, um, I, you know, I shouldn't say that. It was real personal. Uh, you know, fe in February there was a fight in Alabama. I fought Izu. I won round of the round of the year for that fight. I walked Izu uh, Ugano out of the out of the out of the ring with a knockout to stop the fight. Uh, later on that night in, in the hotel, uh, um, Deontay Wilder wanted to approach me and, and explain to me that, you know, I said this and I said that. He has his finger in my face. It was pushing and shoving going on. Not only did he come by himself, but he came with about 20 individuals. So he came with a purpose. And he, and he, he tried to intimidate you. He tried to intimidate me, definitely, without a doubt. I, you know, and, and mind you, I'm there with my wife in hand and my kids in hand. We're going down for a dinner after me, and I'm sure you've been there several times where you just want to take your team down and, and rejoice in the win. And that was my mindset. And, and here I have Deontay Wilder and his posse trying to crazy some crazy nonsense at about 11 o'clock midnight at night. Um, uncalled for. I'm a very professional individual, and in boxing, we need to keep it professional. What we do inside the square is different from what we're going to do on the outside of the ring. And uh, people look up to us in that situation. People were looking down on Wilder that night. Yeah, no, understood. Jay says, "How can you deal with Wilder's big right hand?" How can how can how can Wilder deal with my big right hand? You know, everybody keeps talking about Wilder's big right hand. I got a big right hand. I got 18 knockouts on my 20 round record. Um, Wilder's got a big right hand, but at the same time. With my distance alone and my range and my jab, I'm going to be able to keep him at bay and uh, continue to just box, box the out of him, man. I'm going to you know, walk to my right, keep my movement going, avoid that right-hand side. Eventually, at one point in the fight, I'm going to have to challenge that right hand and see if, if he's really got it. But at the same time, hopefully I get him out of there before that. I plan on doing a lot of fundamentals, things that got me through my amateur career, things that got me through my early uh, uh, young pro career. Oh, good man. And Leachman says, when you show Walder you are the man, how will you celebrate? Man, uh, this is something I've been thinking about for a long, long time. I know I've been missing out on a lot of, a lot of the gummy bears that I missed out on and the cheesecakes that I missed out on. Uh, but instantly, when they, when they raise my hand and they wrap that belt around my waist and they say, and the new, um, I think I'm just going to take a deep breath and, and take, a, take a moment to, to suck it all in because I, I, I've got to have an understanding that the crowd's going to go wild, um, that there's going to be cheering upon cheering. There might be fans and, and friends and family in the, in the crowd that are crying. Um, but I want to rejoice in the moment. I want. Are I want you to expecting a lot of fans on Saturday night? Yes, definitely. Barclays? I'm definitely a lot of fans. I'm definitely. I'm expecting a lot of family. Um, I've gained tons of fans just being here in the last couple of days. Uh, we did some great things going over to the schools and talking to the kids and, and letting them know that the fight's happening as well. Um, you know, giving them a chance to, to, to meet an entertainer, to meet a professional athlete. Uh, just just walking around town, people are asking. You know, of course, I'm a big statured man, and I, like I said, I carry myself as a professional individual. I greet individuals and I say hi to everybody. Um, and, and I'm gaining fans on a daily basis. And we've got a lot of fans that are traveling from the West Coast, uh, Arizona, Texas, California, places like that. So it's going to be it's going to be a big show. And Lewis says, "Who are your top five heavyweights?" Top five heavyweights currently fighting. I uh, couldn't give you that, but I, I mean, I'm going to be the top of the top of the cream of the crop on that situation. But I think uh, if, if I had to give you five, my biggest dog is Riddick Bow. Uh, Muhammad Ali's got to be in there. Lennox Lewis, Evander Holyfield, and no Mike Tyson. Tyson was too small for me, man. Tyson was a big bad man, but uh, being a big heavyweight, uh, it's it's hard to put Tyson up there because. Tyson didn't give me, oh, I guess I didn't study enough of his film. I was a big fan, but I didn't study enough of his film. And uh, he didn't come to show up when it came time to fight Holyfield, man. And he got two opportunities to do it. So my biggest thing, uh, uh, the last one I'm, I'm probably going to put on there is uh, Buster Douglas, only because he shocked Mike Tyson. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was a big win. Yeah. Biggest upset ever, maybe. Well, one of the best. I mean, everybody keeps saying if, if, when I get this win on Saturday, it's going to be a big upset. I don't think it's going to be nearly as big as that Mike Tyson, Buster Douglas one, but I'm looking forward to it. Oh, good, man. And Danny says, if you beat Wilder, would you be looking to unify the titles against AJ? Yeah, I keep telling people it's not if, it's when I beat Wilder. When I beat Wilder, I definitely would love to unify the titles against AJ. Um, I understand, and I've understand now for the last two and a half, almost three years, since I fought AJ in the summer of 2016, that that was my only way to get back to him. It was my only way to get back to a rematch with AJ. AJ has no reason to come down to me and fight me, but if I've got a belt that he wants, he's definitely going to fight me for it. So unification in the Undisputed Heavyweight Championship belt is definitely on the rise. And James says, how much do you think you have improved since your loss to Joshua? 
Oh, man, it's been uh, it's been night and day. I've made some adjustments in training camp. I, I've got a new trainer. I've moved camp to a new place. Um, I've learned why I'm using my jab opposed to just using it because I'm a big guy. Um, how to place the right hand, how to throw speed on it, uh, defensive tactics as well. Um, now, I wouldn't say I'm a completely new fighter because my bases and my grounds are still there. I'm still big and athletic. I'm still fast. I might be faster now. I'm lighter on weight. You think I'm your different. intelligence has improved? Yeah, right? without a doubt. I was, that was the thing I was going to get to. My trainer, Virgil Hunter, is, is not necessarily a traditional trainer. He's, he's a coach, but a, but a teacher as well. Um, if I could have put him in a classroom and had a pen and a notebook, I could have learned a whole lot more. But because of the fact that I was learning from him inside the boxing gym, I took as much as I could each day and day and kind of grew upon each day. Monday, I might have been learning why I was throwing the angle over the jab this way. And Tuesday, now I was putting the right hand and the hook behind it. And there was a purpose behind everything, opposed to just, hey, go over there and hit the back for six rounds. Um, it was a beautiful thing. And for a student athlete like myself, I learned a ton. And I can't wait to, to show it off on Saturday night. Good man, good man. Gray says, well, it's a similar thing. How much has Virgil Hunter helped you as a trainer? I suppose that's kind of Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of the double, double, double standard. But I'm glad I made the move to Vir uh, Virgil. You know, he he he, he taught me a whole lot of stuff. I got an understanding of why I'm why I'm still involved in boxing and why I've got a lot more to learn. Uh, you know, I've only been boxing for 10 years now, and Virgil Hunter is going to be the man that gets me to the next 10 years. And this is the last tweet from Rene. What's your fight prediction? How will it all end? It's definitely going to end in a knockout. I can't tell you the round because I plan on doing different things in different rounds. Uh, my wife's favorite number is, is three. I told her I'm going to get him out of there before three, but I definitely am not going to let it go past three. So third round knockout's my prediction. All right. Well, that's brilliant. Well, that's all we have for this week's hashtag toe to toe. Thank you, Dominic. You've all been right. brilliant. I appreciate it. Thank oh, you for having me on. Cheers. Sky Sports. Feel it all.